Uh, something I saw when I was a kid. So much problems, so much issues, so much ills, and not a lot of people doing anything. Corona people that I look up to not doing anything is like, wow, no, as a kid, you can see the problem, right? If you don't do that thing, that thing will not happen. I've got a daughter, what I'm leaving behind, I don't have much wealth of leaving like land and things, you know, there's a lot of dispute around land. I only have the knowledge and to do the best that I can do of what I have and um, give that or contribute or teach that. If you had to go to a gallery and look at a painting, and you would know what that thing tastes like. It's like when you look at the plate of food, you know, it's got to look good, and it tastes good and smell good. Maxwell Southgate and his girlfriend, Jade Duvall, love cooking together. They regularly host food jams at their house, teaching friends and other interested parties how to make food in an interactive way. I grew up in the house of cooking. And I also try to cook um, things that are different than new. He introduced me to the most amazing flavor combinations together because as a chef, you kind of you go with like the normal flavor, you, you know which ones work, which ones don't work, and you experiment and you put things together. His whole family, or well, like they all know they're chefs or they work in the industry or something like that. So he's got a good background, but then he takes it up a whole nother level. He goes like, I know all of that, those things. I'll just flip it up, <laughs> change it up, use whatever I can find in the kitchen as well, which is kind of what we're doing right now. As well, well, that's called a survival mode. Survival mode. <laughs> this is a survival dish as well. When you come okay. back early hours of the morning or just before you have about 15 minutes to make something. I think there was a bit of expectation of me becoming a chef like my dad. I uh, was not leaning in the direction much, really. But it doesn't mean I didn't copy with my eyes what I saw, like watching how my mom make the food or how my dad make food from scratch. Mm. So, so you just want to go like this. And it's nice when it's still a little bit softer. One, two, three. Hey! 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 A lot of times it's so hard to describe uh, the feeling of what you do in the drive you have because um, art is still very new to a lot of people in South Africa. Not art in the sense of knowing about art, actually practicing it and doing it. And knowing what it, what it is when um, sometimes like, you feel like you're standing alone in the crowd. You know, you discover other people who, who's got the same passion and love for it. But in the journey of it, it's a um, solo journey. Maxwell is more commonly known as Mac One, a professional graffiti artist, prolific around the streets of Cape Town. Mac, a self-taught artist, is committed to using his work to inform and challenge opinions, but also to inspire people. He is a conscious artist who has collaborated on many murals all over South Africa and the world. Um, when we started out, we didn't have permission for it because there was a lot of red tape and we didn't know sure it was going to work. We just went through, put color on the building. It wasn't intended to um, defy the law in any way. No, there was no one really putting attention to the space. And we just put color on it. Wasn't, we didn't know what, I didn't know what we were going to paint on it. I would just like put something on it and just make the color look pretty. That means the environment will change. And everyone passing through will look at the environment differently. There are people living on the street and people that own businesses and people pass through to look at the, the environment, the space, but differently. You know, they're saying, they say, um, if a wall could say, could speak. Well, it can. The artists have to bring it out of the wall. You paint it, and then the wall is speaking. I love graffiti art. Sometimes you want to eat it off the wall. So it's bringing that to life. And you actually, actually live it's like an artist living in, within the, the work that they do and they create all the time. 
and the gated people, another dimension, instead of just watching it and making you feel good when you see color or certain lines happen, actually get a taste and smell that as well. SA's first international public art festival was launched this year in the suburb of Salt River in Cape Town. This 10-day festival, which is dedicated to teaching and creating public art, goes beyond showcasing existing work to creating new work, but is also aimed at helping the neighbourhoods to become more beautiful and safer. It harnesses the power and creativity of art to improve people's lives. So the reason for launching this festival I don't think it's enough words to describe it. It just makes sense. It's, the, the community will, can tell you, could others put it in words for me or we will organize the festival. Cape Town is a beautiful, colorful city. It's a creative city. And so why not bring that onto, into Salt River? They don't have events like um, open streets, like the way Bree Street has. They, they don't have any festivals around here. With the community's involvement and the community saying like, come, come into our area and, and bring some colour into our area, we've decided to, to take on the streets of, of Salt River. It's easy for me to say, well, what are we going to do, or what are we trying to bring towards the community? But the uh, people benefiting it from, from it, they would be the ones who would be to testify and say, this is what's happening, or this is the good or the bad. And it goes along, it's not obviously um, a concept set in stone as a thing of growth. You know, there's a lot of teething problems that have to happen, a lot of doubt, a lot of people with concerns, of course there is. But uh, instead of um, throwing stones or standing from a distance and pointing and shouting, I'd rather come up and ask questions, ask, how can you help? Or how can you make it better? Instead of just trying to knock down things, especially if you're not doing anything to help change the community. Amazing artwork has gone up, and we have artists from all different backgrounds, fine artists, we have graffiti artists, we have street artists, we have artists that's had the challenge or the first opportunity to paint on a, a public space, like a, a big mural, um, which has been challenging for some of them, but they're, they're excited and they, they want to have that opportunity, so it's, it's been incredible. Mac One is at his aunt's house for the day. Born and raised in Mitchell's Plain, Cape Town, Mac and the members of his family now all live in different parts of the city and relish having the opportunity for a family catch-up. Max drew on everything uh, that in the in the church he knows on every piece of paper that he got. It's like there was a drawing. Like wherever you go, there was like it's like Max was attached to the Pencil, or the pencil and book was attached to him. <laughs> Even when we were driving to the beach or to family in backseat, he was there, busy drawing. I don't remember any of that. I, we remember because we were the ones that <laughs> saw that. And that's the kind of memories we have of you, obviously. It's like, when you're growing up, it's like, you just saw him with a book and a pencil, like this, all the time. And even in the backseat, even when he was calling me names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he started at a young age. And of course, his mother thought he was crazy because she didn't realize the potential in graffiti. <laughs> yes. Because as you know, graffiti is um, compared with... Um, no, not normal artists. Uh, not even close. <laughs> not even close, yeah. It's just something that, you know, you're not, it's not good enough. It's uh, portrayed to be seen as um, people hanging out there and doing drugs and drinking and hanging out with the wrong people and, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Which I suppose at the time she didn't know any better or didn't understand it better conceive the realization that he's actually come out tops today.
So when you have to cover your books, you know, the beginning of year for school, you have to cover those books. 100 books you have to cover for no reason. But that was my favorite part in the books so was the covering part um, and, the, and the decorations you had to put on the front. Nothing went inside the books. I was nearly good at that, but the outside and, and, and then some of the, a lot of the students would ask me to do the artwork and I was like, wow, I could do more of this. But you were drawing, drawing all the time. That's yeah. really you were all the time. Well, that's why I failed so many times in school. The School wasn't kind because they didn't allow my drawing to make me pass. It's like, mm. Earlier, we met Maxwell Southgate, sometimes cook but full-time graffiti artist, known professionally as Mac One. Born and raised on the Cape Flats, Mac has been helping to beautify the streets of Cape Town since 1989, and one of his most recent collaborations has been with South Africa's first international public art festival which had its inaugural launch in Salt River this year. The word graffiti comes from the Italian word graffiato, which means scratched. Art historians believe the term arose from the fact that the earliest forms of graffiti were carved on walls with sharp objects. Stone Age cave paintings are considered to be the first type of graffiti humans created. Some say that the adolescent teenagers that couldn't hunt stayed behind in the caves and doodled on the walls to pass the time. The ancient Romans carved graffiti on walls and monuments, examples of which also survive in Egypt. The first known example of modern style graffiti survives in the ancient Greek city Ephesus. Local guides say it is an advertisement for prostitution. In New York, in the early 1980s, graffiti started moving from the streets to the subways and quickly became competitive. At this point, it consisted of mostly tags and the goal was to have as many as possible. In South Africa, the Sharpeville massacre of 21 March 1960 and the Soweto uprising of 16 June 1976 were some of the main events that triggered a series of protests, protest art and the use of graffiti. Hip-hop culture on the Cape Flats started as an underground movement in the early 1980s, when government repression and the banning of protesting meant that people had to find new ways to express their grievances. Unlike the spray can kids in the United States, the agenda of the graffiti artists of South Africa was to communicate messages, using the walls of the city as galleries and notice boards. Much of the graffiti was political, marking the white walls of the apartheid regime and calling for the release of political prisoners. Graffiti resurfaced again in the late 90s, reflecting the social ills of the post-apartheid era, such as class struggles and imbalances, corruption, HIV, violence, racism and poverty. The graffiti art scene has traditionally been seen as a male-dominated arena, but women have been making inroads into this space over the last few decades. One such artist is Claire Homewood, who is fine art trained, but has found a real affiliation with the aerosol spray can. Art can be very informational. So instead of learning through reading, you can learn through visuals. That's why I like to put lots of details in my illustration and even some text. I think um, we do have potential to make difference to our environments and the people around us, so just trying to keep that in mind. For me, the most important thing is that we're connected to nature and that we are living in an integrated way with nature and each other. Painting around the Sun Play Trust was an idea to just help draw focus to some of the creatures that live here and whose home this is, so that we feel like a little bit more like we're entering their space and not always feel like this is just where we are stomp around. Painting with the name Care One Love. So this is, Care is a shortened version of my name. My name with a cup, without a couple of letters. But it also means to, to just take note of something or have concern for something, to protect something just to bring awareness to that thing that may need a bit more nurturing or support. I'd never really been into graffiti or taken much note of um, 
the graffiti around. I was fine art trained, very into what I thought was it. <laughs> um, I did art school and then after art school, I spent time trying to unlearn everything <laughs> that I'd learned. Um, just trying to see if how my own creativity would bubble up without being in a competitive environment, hierarchical environment, like university. But I've spent a lot of time hanging out with graffiti artists and have learned a lot. I first picked up a spray can, I really didn't think it's so hard. You, it's, um, it's much harder than what it looks. <laughs> so I really struggled. I was very frustrated. You can't really make it do what you want it to do. But after a couple of years of pursuing and just watching how other artists use the can, I got a bit more confident. And then it kind of clicked a bit more. I still got a long way to go. What people think of as graffiti are the, the tags, um, that you see around urban environments, what you see on trains, what you see on walls. Um, this is part of graffiti culture, which is part of hip hop culture, which has a long history and um, is very relevant to our urban environments. Cape Town has a very rich history of graffiti, which has largely been painted over by the city. You know, it has a culture and it has a way of um, working. I don't, I didn't personally like come through that. My approach was, has been different. I've, I've been painting walls since I was 14. I've been earning money from painting walls since I was 14. So I was definitely also one of those people that would look at the tags and look at the graffiti and just be like, ugh, that's so annoying, that's so gross, that's so, how can people be so disrespectful of other people's property, blah, blah, blah. But the more I hung out with graffiti artists and learned about the culture, then the more I saw and especially when I picked up a, uh, up a spray can, then I saw like, whoa, it's actually very hard. It takes real skill. She um, always was the leader of the pack and she had a very strong will and knew what she wanted. And uh, she had the knack of organizing people to the point where they believed it was their idea. And I think that that uh, gift still remains with her today, where she's able to get people to go along, um, all believing it's their idea to go in that direction, but it's actually her plan at the back. So... It makes sound like I'm trying to manipulate people. <laughs> You're very good at doing that, getting people to, to, to take action, but um, do it cooperatively rather than dogmatically. So that's probably... But for good cause. But for good cause, very good cause. I don't know. But her brothers might disagree with that when they were made to dress up and play with dolls, but I'm sure it was for a good cause. <laughs> yeah, I'll just go back um, to when she was born. I painted out her room. Um, every wall had, had murals on it, and I, I took polystyrene and I cut out uh, Disney characters and I put them on her wall. When she came home from, from the maternity hospital, her room was just like there, all artistic, everything was done for her. And um, maybe, maybe that influenced her or maybe it was just some synchronicity in, in, in events, but she was brought up in a very creative room with a lot of murals on the wall. Yeah, I'm amazed at how quickly she does what she does. I mean, they didn't get taught any of this at, uh, at, at, at Varsity, none of this. And um, to see her change in style is, is quite remarkable. And she's very flexible and talented to be able to take on new forms of art very quickly. Uh, yeah, and express herself in, in, in different ways, which is really good. Claire has helped me broaden my um, horizons and to see street art for what it is. It is a, a natural expression. If you drive down the highway, not so much in Cape Town, but particularly in Johannesburg, you're bombarded with, with advertising. You, everywhere you go, there's billboards screaming, and that's, that's all right. But if you paint something on a wall, then that, that's not all right. And so we have these, these um, double values in, in, in life. And I think that um, artists need to express themselves in a way. Obviously, there's got to be certain controls, but if it's done not just purely putting your name on a wall, but if it's done in, a, in, a, in an artistic way, I, I, I support that. I really do support that. Not that I supported it back then, but I definitely do now. You can do a lot with it. 
Um, and I like that we can do that on the street as well. So we can really paint the information and ideas that we think are important or that are coming up as seem to be relevant in our communities and we can actually paint that information on the wall. Although Claire is incredibly passionate about graffiti art and the social messaging it can convey, like many other graffiti artists out there, she also has bills to pay. As a result, she has found other ways to support herself as an artist and entrepreneur. I've always been really in admiration for the wire work that is made locally. And after trying to work with wire, you realize it's really hard. So it's serious skill. And I had an amazing friend who was a very talented wire artist. So we started collaborating and eventually developed the Afrosol, which is a parasol that has a bamboo pole and is completely made with wire, all the inside is wire work, so it's a wire work mechanism. And then we do all different kinds of textiles for the covers. So you can have your Afrosol made up in any textile you want. I also do a lot of uh, book illustration for books and publications. This is a early childhood development manual where I worked on all the illustrations as part of the manual, so, you know, when that's actually based on my on my my sister, I did the illustrations for two of the chapters. Um, one was one of the chapters is on education, and the other chapter is on Ubuntu. So this was the illustration for the Ubuntu chapter, because the idea was seeing us all as part of a beehive, so all working together, but in a diversity of people. So we, we started a project in Musenberg called the Musenberg Postcard Project. And we've created a set of postcards that showcase Musenberg. We print them on recycled paper and we stock them in places all around Musenberg. And they do well. Before the break, we met Claire, who has been an artist for the majority of her life but who has in the last few years broadened her artistic scope to include graffiti. Having been raised in an artistic home with a very supportive family, Claire is managing to sustain herself as an artist through both her street art projects as well as other art-based business projects. Now, okay, you when I say hello, then you say I wear hello. Mac One is often commissioned by private companies, festivals and organizations to create murals. It's not uncommon to find graffiti commissioned to support awareness campaigns of cultural, political and public health issues. Such collaborations have helped to alleviate the negative perceptions attached to hip-hop since the apartheid era. So Infecting the City is a public arts platform that looks to activate like public spaces with different artistic interventions. So using art as a, as a means to bring space to life and also as a, a mechanism to reclaim space. She told me that my skin that represents the earth soil, that was my fact to hold and nobody that fact could spoil. She told me how my hook contained the clicks of the Nama and how my forefathers fought against the oppression of Vasco da Gama. So once the two collaborate, it, it brings about seeing and hearing um, sight and sound, putting them together as a kind of exploration for people to understand the message that, we, that we're navigating as, as artists in this, in this public space. I don't, didn't like the flat in the way it was run by our parents, by the people before me. And, and I'm going in those flats, I'm like, yo, you're a kid, what do you do? You do something about it. I don't want to throw a brick, <laughs> rob yeah. someone, or actually go use a skill and go do something. Oh, and people are going to bash you all the time. You're going to get you know, criticism from everyone. Usually that's got to do with fear. It's understandable. That's usually the thing that fuels me. It's fear, you know, like, yo. Alexandra Tillmans is the director of Cape Town-based nonprofit Baz Art, whose main sphere of interest is to commission, preserve, interpret, and promote public art of any style and form, including graffiti art. 
he and the organization have long been involved in helping to negate the stereotypes that surround the art form. When the world is tense or when a country is tense, that's where you find that violent form of expression. So that's how it started and it continued until it settles or until the world resolves itself or the country resolves itself. I think the ordering man probably doesn't really like it because he doesn't understand it, except when he can read the message and like relate to it. There's always, I would say, two worlds. There's the, the violent, tense world, dark, and there's the optimism with a beautiful message and that makes people smile. So I think the ordinary people prefer what makes them smile than what is dark. But what is dark also needs to be expressed. So the biggest misconception is definitely when people don't consider it as art or as a form of expression. Um, yes, it could be linked to drugs and to violence and it could be considered disrespectful. Same thing as when you write a shocking title in a newspaper you feel revolt and consider it as it is. It's, you might not like it, but somebody else might like it. The rule of graffiti is pretty beautiful, which is you can tag your name or tag some words, but if me or somebody next to me thinks he can do better than what you did, he's gonna go on top of you and write his words on top of you. It's a very nice law, it's, it's, it's a street law, but it's a very clear law. Do better, your piece will disappear. Just improve yourself. Just work on your style, work on your techniques, work on your message. Just make it better, more beautiful, and then you can paint over again. Mac and Jade are hanging out with Rosano Davids, friend and fellow hip-hop collaborator, who has been part of the Cape Town hip-hop lexicon and long-time contributor to its DJ scene since the 1980s. Turntable number one. Turntable number two. So, can I put my eyes your boot? I think there's a common uh, factor that brought us together which is the hip-hop culture. I just started hearing about Mac One, you know, and Falco, and like this new breed of graffiti artists. I've been part of the graffiti scene, obviously, because it's part of hip-hop. I've been out there at night, running around, carrying the cans for artists like these. <laughs> You're working with the creative and creators so, are, you know, you don't need no alcohol, no drugs. It's natural high that will could irritate you, or you could enjoy it, you know. But that's working with artists. Yeah, that was the like the hip hop gathering for hip hop heads uh, or underground music heads, because we didn't just do hip hop. We did funk and like even underground breakbeat, housey, anything that was exciting. We played it um, or. I think more so anything that attitude and represented the streets, I think that was important. But it was a uniting factor, the music. It didn't just unite different talented mm. people. Um, so the it also opened up people. Many people didn't know what the hidden talents was. It was like, okay, I'm gonna be a break dancer. Yep. Says, I can't do this spinning on my head. I'm gonna pick up a can or I'm gonna pick up a mic. Or So people found themselves through the culture. I think that's what's important. That's what I did. They're still mm. doing. Yeah. So powerful it is. Us living this culture, me living it, and this the, like kept the question like how I'm, how long I know him, <laughs> for a long time, you know, um, and to be doing the thing that you love doing since since day one. It's a lot. It's a lot of work, a lot of courage, it's not just for yourself, but for upcoming. And people before you as well, a lot of the guys who stopped doing it come back into the thing again. So knowing people like Rosano is really important, especially for me, because the music that was played helped me to create the visual artwork that everyone likes. Well-known South African graffiti artist Mac One has branched out of the mainstream view of what graffiti artist is traditionally seen as and is commissioned on a regular basis by organizations and festivals to create art that often has a viable social message. The 
Serge and I have been working together since 2010. And we met through the, the, just Musenberg, just being in Musenberg, working on the Musenberg Festival together. And I spotted that he had a really a, a good sense of graphic design. He's a very talented graphic designer. After working a lot together and collaborating a lot together, we also had a big major collaboration of creating a daughter together. So that was a big collaboration. Um, so raising a daughter um, calls for more kind of clarity in what you're doing and making sure that you know yeah, how you're gonna make every month turn and make sure that the needs for your family are provided. And so in kind of going through that process, we've both become a bit more clear that we need to focus on ourselves in terms of being artists in our own right and not just always collaborating because we're kind of getting a little bit lost in that. When I met Claire, um, she was very into fine art and I kind of had a big influence on her into using um, aerosol cans and painting and adopting like a more street art or graffiti feel we kind of influenced each other like with our painting and painting a lot of projects together. I've seen a huge like transformation in her ability and just her love for um, aerosol art as well. I think a lot of fine artists are trying to get involved into graffiti or street art nowadays because they see how big the movements become and also how much more accessible the work actually is because it's not limited to a gallery or um, an art institution. So it's not so much elitist where only uh, university students or people who can afford that kind of education can access art. Being pregnant and painting was a mission. It was like walking against the tide. It felt like, oh, I am so tired, this is so crazy. I painted, we painted a private commission in somebody's house along their driveway up a really steep hill when I was just pregnant. Going up and down that hill was hell and it was February, it was hot, it was, ugh. Um, I definitely didn't get to paint as much being pregnant and having a new baby, so I just had to kind of surrender to being out of the game for a little bit. I think a graffiti artist predominantly is a male arena because it's out there and um, you have to have a bit of a street edge and be willing to push yourself. I mean, I'm not painting trains at night, so I'm not in that game at all. Um, what I'm doing is a bit different, but still does call for me often being the only woman or yeah so I think it is it's exciting to be a woman in this game because I am pushing boundaries when I'm at the top of a ladder or I'm on the scaffolding or something with a spray can people do look at you differently and go oh, okay that's a chick she's on the scaffolding she's got a spray can that's cool um, I think that's important for young women or young girls. They walk past, they see that, maybe something gets planted in their brain about them being able to push some boundaries and do things that they think they wouldn't have been able to do. So that's important for me, just the presence. Sometimes I'm like, what am I doing here? This is crazy. And then I'm like, no, maybe just my presence, not even what I paint is having an impact. There's always been women involved in graffiti, like even in the hip hop culture, like it's some of the most prolific like artists are females. Um, the nice thing about this movement is most of the time we don't actually know each other's sexes even because of most of us are using aliases and you often have one precons, like you have an idea of who this person is and then you meet them and you're like, oh, it's you, actually. So um, I think it's only natural that more women get involved and paint more. I mean, I have a daughter. I'm not trying to raise her with any like um, gender stereotypes, you know, like she can only do this line of, th of work or be involved in this kind of thing. So I would encourage like more females to get involved with street art, graffiti, um, yeah. Where 
place for change. Uh, we've been involved for about six years doing murals, painting surfboards, doing workshops for the kids. So we've seen some kids go from little ones to coaches themselves. It's a really amazing program where kids go through the years of surfing, learning how to surf. Um, they also have an amazing feeding program and they also do social work and counseling. Yeah, it's an amazing program. So kids, we've seen kids grow from little guys in oversized wetsuits to being coaches and we check them here in Monrovici and we see them in Musenberg and yeah it's been a fun collaboration. What they did they come with the, they come to the children with the kids and also they teach the kids how to do art and also they help those ones especially those ones they are good at art and also it's an easy way to communicate Besides some of the people, they don't have the strength to speak, but they do have the strength with, with uh, painting and art. This is a safe space for them. And also they see the colors, they see their pictures on the wall, so they make them feel comfortable and safe and happy. I don't remember, you know, from a parent's point of view when they knew that. I knew, I knew it from a long time ago. It's so like it's like anyone knowing about them, something about themselves, but it takes a long time to to bring it out, to express it, or to find a medium for that to be possible. Even Mac One is back in Salt River. As part of the continuing work to uplift the community, plans have been initiated to utilize public art to enhance areas like schools through visual and moral upliftment. The aim is to help create an environment where art is used to improve people's physical and social environments. A whole lot of French dignitaries came through, came to help, um, or came, they actually came to learn how to paint <laughs> from the kids at this, at this daycare. And today, with the assistance, we're gonna, they're going to help um, give this lot of the kids the uh, attending school year a reason to love art. So here we talk about art and street art, and it's the theme of the work here. So thank you, and I'm Mac One, a Mac graffiti one. artist. Mac One. What's your name? What's your full name? Mac One. Mac One. Mac One. There was a lot of interaction. So sound protective here. Uh, I think Does the kids have learned as well a bit of French. And I think a lot of the French have learned a lot of the South African uh, language and attitudes and um, okay, how to approach a wall. <laughs> Just click the roll and start rolling. Okay. And the whole hall, top to bottom, don't be shy. Okay, cool. Yeah. cool, cool. Okay. Yeah. The mixture between the, the French and the young kids today is a good example of how well South Africa has worked, has been working, of the mixture of everyone's background, doesn't really matter, um, and the diversity, and it's basically teaching, and the show is working that, you know, you can learn from each other, doesn't matter your age and background, or... So, art, especially painting on the wall, um, allows that platform to exist. And there's no, there's no um, judgment of how good with a brawl or with a paintbrush or if you can speak a certain language, if you, can, if you want to paint and participate, you're really talking and learning something different. <laughs> Once you discover what you like, then you go into the discipline of whatever that takes to get you the best of that thing. Come, come, come. Then move to another side of the wall, then, then, and then you can move, then you can move around. Are you, are you gonna compose back this one? <laughs> it's beautiful. Can't you see the beautiful? See them? <laughs> it's amazing. No, we'll to make an interpretation. Yeah, long as it, long as it's pulling, pulling all the whites, this wall is here. My discipline. I have to bring it out. It will change these kids' minds of appreciating art. Then a lot of the social ills will kind of disappear because the environment that creates the social ills changes. And the best thing about that is automatically the, the people affect other people and just keep on growing and keep on going. 
But it's like a, it's like a farmer or like a gardener in the garden. You got to keep attending it to make sure the crops are going to grow. It's going to get the, you're going to reap the rewards at the end, which is not, you don't achieve an end. It's only the direction you go. That makes any sense. So. Earlier, we saw how Claire Homewood balances her family life while also working as a graffiti artist. We also saw Mac One continuing to work in public spaces that need it the most, as well as impart his skill set to the next generation. Claire and her partner Serge are in their hometown of Musenberg where they have been asked to create a mural for the local beach festival. This crowd-funded event has tapped into the rich vein of art, surfing and the music of the community. is a radio and Cosa. And the subject of our coming. painting today so is La Zola. She is actually the MC inside, so she's the one holding the whole day uh, with her voice and messages that's happening in the tent. So the idea with painting her today is that she's a personality in the event today, but she's also somebody that's doing some really cool work um, in Musenberg. So we'll, we're going to paint a portrait of her and then put some of her words into the painting so people can read a bit about what she's on about, her message, so that's what's going to come through in the painting. And then the painting belongs to the festival. <laughs> So Sikomelelana is the connection. Nolwa is with the wisdom. Laman to offer water. Is it Nolwa? Nolwa. Is that an L? Yes. Nolwa. There's one line once, you know, happiness is, happiness, I can't remember the exact words, but happiness only works when it's shared. So what is happiness to you, you know? Happiness to you is easy, but happiness to you and shared, 
with other people and it's and it works and it grows. That's mostly what I'm interested in. I think since I was 14, 15, 16, all those years I felt like my art, I felt like it was my responsibility to be an artist and I needed to make sure that my art said something and had an impact and was, had a purpose. It felt like very important. It wasn't just about making beautiful things. I think it's become a little bit more about making beautiful things as I've learned about how to be an artist in the world of needing to earn a living because then things change, but definitely from when I was young, I had a very strong sense of I was on a mission. <laughs> For as long as people have been able to write, they have been writing on walls. In recent years, graffiti has evolved into a less defiant aesthetic and a popular urban youth culture of all races. By going beyond the racial barriers, the whole of hip-hop culture could be viewed as a post-apartheid art form, which comments on the new ways communities and racial groups identify themselves. Both Mac One and Clay are earnest, hardworking, sensitive and reflective in all aspects of their work, and seem to subscribe to the modern-day offspring of traditional graffiti that has elevated itself from just scrawling words or phrases on a wall to a complex artistic form of personal expression.